Hi, my name is Ivo. I'm doing research into Nikola Tesla's radiant energy, which is based on impulse electricity. In this video, I will talk about Nikola Tesla's extra coil. I will not only talk about it, I will experiment with it and I will show you the results, which are pretty remarkable. To explain this, I will talk about and show you resonant power, which I already talked about in my previous videos. And I'll also talk a little bit more about the ripples of my previous video, because I found out I can get rid of them. And that was very important for me. Let's take a look. In my previous video, I talked about the ripples and I got a lot of answers from you in the comment section, which I'm very grateful for. While looking to understand the cause of the ripples, I played and experimented with it. I noticed there is a correlation between the L2 primary and the L3 secondary coil and the ripples in L2. So my conclusion is that the coupling of L1 and L2 and the loose coupling of L2 and L3 has a influence on the ripples. But more importantly, the primary L2 coil does not need to be perfectly series resonant because that's when the ripples really are appearing, but they can pass through L2 above the resonant frequency also. Just tune up a little bit higher and I have a perfect impulse. And that is very important to me because I need those impulses. I'm not sure if I even need it to be series resonant. So I have a quick impulse without series resonance when I tune above it. This tuning above series resonance also decreases the power consumption from the supply. And I already showed that in my April 2019 radiant power video. Okay, so I don't fully understand the cause of the ripples, but I know now how to play with it and how to tune it to get a perfect impulse. And it's all about the impulse for me. I want that impulse to induce resonance in the secondary L3 coil. Resonant power. In my previous videos, I have shown you the resonant power cycle, where voltage and current are 90 degrees out of phase. The power cycle is an octave higher than the resonant frequency. I will now show you the power cycles of a DC resistive load and an AC power source with a resistive load. In both cases, AC and DC with a resistive load, the voltage and the current are in phase, so we can calculate real power. Using a 12 volt battery and a pure resistive load of 12 ohms, we can easily use Ohm's law to calculate the current, which is then one ampere, which leads to 12 watts of power, consumption that is, because all that energy is transformed into heat and is radiated away and is lost. With an AC source, we can do the same. This time we will have a 12 volts RMS AC source and we will use the same 12 ohms pure resistive load. Then the current again will be one amp RMS. But this time it will be a sine wave. And again, the voltage and current are present at the same time, just like with the resistive load. And they have the same polarity, which is important. They are in phase, which means there is a constant consumption of power. Well, it's not constant because it's a rectified half wave. Negative times negative is positive. And the generation comes from the chemical transformation process in the battery. So this means we can multiply voltage and current again to calculate power and we get 12 watts. It's just like a full bridge rectified signal. It's only positive, so it's only consumption. Now let's take a look at the resonant sine waves of current and voltage again. So the resonant where the voltage and current are 90 degrees out of phase. At the maximum of one, the other is always zero. But in between the maximums, there always is power because both are present, voltage and current are present. Except there is a 
positive and a negative power from generation and consumption from the coil charge and the capacitor charge, which results in a zero resultant power because positive and negative power are equal size. They cancel each other out. You get nothing out. There is no real power in resonance. Now the question is, can we get that voltage and current in phase like I showed you before? Is that possible? Because when the huge resonant currents and voltages, which we can magnify, are in phase, this would represent real power. And you see that smile on my face? Can this be done? The answer is yes, it can be done. With Nikola Tesla's extra coil. His extra coil appeared in his Colorado spring notes. And it appeared in the Watercliffe magnifying transmitter coil patterns. So what is this extra coil? Well, simply put, you have the secondary coil and the extra coil is put in series connection to that secondary coil. So you got two coils. In my case, L3 is the secondary coil, it's parallel resonant. And the L4 coil is the extra coil, which is connected in series. I just tried that and I was amazed by the result. The voltage and current of this extra coil are in phase, and I will show you this. And not only that, they are able to produce real power, because if I put a parallel resistor over L4, it heats up, which is quite extraordinary. So yeah, I will show you the setup and I'll show you the oscilloscope readings. And while tuning this setup, I will also show you the ripples, which were the topic of my previous video and how they disappear if I tune it above series resonance. This is the circuit that I use. I explained it in my previous videos and L4 is a series connection with the L3 secondary coil. Okay, this is my setup. The dual MOSFET switch for high voltage impulse generation. This is the L1 coil. Only this part is the L1. Underneath you see the close coupled L2 coil. Underneath that is a loose coupled secondary L3 coil because L2 is the primary. I've got 15 millimeters separation. And underneath that is the L4 extra coil. And that coil is made of 0.75 square millimeters. The L2 and L3 are equal size, 1.5 square millimeters. And L1 is two and a half square millimeters wire. So the MOSFET switch is here. I've got my capacitors for catching the positive impulse. So I only get to use the negative impulse in the coil. Uh, diodes to block it and here's my series tuning capacitor and here is the DC offset module for the L2 coil and the DC blocking capacitor and all the diodes. Here are four more diodes. That's the negative DC offset of the L3 coil with its ground capacitor and here is the tuning capacitor for L3 parallel resonance. L4 is series connected to L3 from the resonant inside rim of L3 to the outside rim of L4. And then L4 is measured on the inside rim again with a current probe and a high voltage probe. The L3 parallel resonance is 9 nanofarads. And the L2 series resonance is 134 nanofarads. Okay, system is on. We're gonna inject some power into the system. And there you see the impulse, the voltage and the current. Oh, my current probe is off. There's the current in green, the voltage of L4 in orange, in yellow the L2 primary coil and in purple blue you can see the square wave that drives the MOSFETs. I'm giving now a power input. Let's give it a little bit more. So now we have a 
impulse of around 1000 volts and zoom in to the impulse it's around 425 nanoseconds in duration and as you can see L2 has no ripple whereby L2 isn't resonant at all but we have a very good impulse so that's one of the first discoveries that I made well I already knew this but it captured my attention again L2 does not need to be resonant to have those very high voltage fast impulses going through it and that's really nice furthermore you can see in orange and in green the voltage and the current of L4 the extra coil I will match them up as you can see they are in phase absolutely in phase and the current probe is a Pintec PA655 and at this frequency of 72.96 kilocycles per second it works fine, it has almost no phase shift but I'm measuring double the frequency because L4 is double the frequency of what I'm driving so that's uh, 144, 45 if I look at the graph, minus 15 degrees so very little so it actually is in phase which of course is very peculiar you can see the voltage of L4 is a thousand volts peak to peak the current is now 3 amps peak to peak almost 3 amps and my input is still uh, 0.5 amps 2 times 8.2 volts makes 8.2 watts so that's part one this is very special to me normally the green and the orange are out of phase 90 degrees I'll now put the current probe on the L3 signal again and I need to be very careful because the system is charged L3 has 672 volts if I'm correct DC from the capacitors of the DC offset but that's all fine now I've got the current probe on L3 on the inside rim of L3 where it's resonant I'll show you the setup again I'll turn the system on again there it is and now you see the green current and the orange voltage are 90 degrees out of phase I'm measuring the voltage of L4 and the current of L3 so the current is phase shifting from L3 to L4 now I'll try being very careful Oops. now I'm going to measure the L3 voltage turn the system on again and here you see the L3 voltage again it is out of phase with the current but also the voltage is much lower in L4 I measured a thousand volts peak to peak and in L3 I measure 460 volts peak to peak while I'm still at the same frequency so the voltages of L3 and L4 are in phase there's no shift and the current magically shifts I don't know how it works I don't but I do know it does work and that's rather unique rather special because when voltage and current are in phase we got real power so very special what I'll do next is connect this resistor and that is a bit tricky with all the, the, the char everything being charged so I'm gonna turn it off and pause the video hook it up and measure again with a load of 8.2 ohms okay I hooked up the resistor of 8.2 ohms power resistor it's not the perfect resistance it has some inductance I believe because it's a uh, metal wound but that's okay it will detune the system a little slightly but that resistor of 8.2 ohms is parallel over L4 I do this to show if there is uh, power in that coil if there's no power then that whole system should be collapsing down to almost zero so I'm going to turn the system on again and I'll show you the scope 
as you can see it is slightly detuned so I'll have to tune again and now you can also see that ripple again but that's no problem because I can tune this and then there is no ripple anymore so this is a lot higher in frequency we got more oscillations on L4, which are measuring in orange and green. Green is the current again, and orange is the voltage. So I'm going to tune up the frequency. And I'm going up in frequency, and you can see there the ripple is gone again. I'm tuning up to the resonant point, and here the resonant point is achieved maximum resonance with the second harmonic and because I'm now at 126.16 kilocycles per second I need a little bit more power to get that same result I now have 0.34 amps going into twice 8.3 volts I'm going to push it up a little bit So we get that high voltage impulse again of around a thousand volts. I believe this is it. I now have 0 0.56 amps at 2 times 15 volts input power. And now the resistor is getting warm. I have a infrared camera for that. And as you can see the resistor is truly getting hot. 53 degrees Celsius. You can clearly see it is hot. If I check for the background, it says 23 degrees. Here's my heat gun. Uh, this is the last measurement. I'll point it on the coils. 22.7 and I'm pointing on the resistor and it says 67 degrees so it truly is having power. Voltage and current are in phase. Resistor is getting really hot. 70 degrees. Yeah, it's heating up. So it's truly having power, which is awesome. Conclusion. We have seen the ripples. They are most present when the primary L2 coil is tuned series resonant and the power consumption is also higher at that point. But above the resonant frequency, we are able to produce pure impulses and it is costing me very little power. And there is no ripples. That's what I need. We have seen the voltage and current of L3 being 90 degrees out of phase, as expected. But unexpectedly, we have seen the L4 extra coil having voltage and current in phase. That blows my mind it's amazing and I can load that extra coil with a resistor and it becomes hot so the power is real it did not flatline the voltage and current will still present in L4 and still in phase furthermore we saw the 8.2 ohm resistor parallel over L4 heat up to 70 degrees Celsius which is a real indication of power these tests were based on pure intuition, so if better tuned, the current and voltages of the L4 extra coil should be able to become much higher. Because it's resonance, we can play with the inductance and with the capacity. I wanted to show you this because it's so extraordinary and maybe it can help someone. This information is all part of my open source research which is for the benefit of the humankind. We need this right now. This means no patent can or will be applied. If you want to fund my research, you can do so by giving a donation on my PayPal account, which is listed below. And also in the video description where you can click it. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.